Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. I am Anjana from LearnoHub, the free learning platform where you can study math, science and SST absolutely free at LearnoHub.com. In today's class, we are going to discuss ICSE class 9 physics chapter 4. Pressure in fluids and atmospheric pressure. We'll be discussing about thrust and pressure. Also, we'll solve questions from exercise 4A. Are you ready for the session? Let's begin. Next concept is pressure. So here you can see I have a balloon in my hand. What happens when I press the balloon? Pressing the balloon means I am applying a force. This force is being applied on an area. What happens then? Due to this force, the balloon may burst. Yes. So here a pressure is created. I am creating a pressure. Okay. So this is what pressure is. Pressure is depending on the force. When you apply more force, there is more pressure. For example, when you hold your hands tight, what is happening? You are applying, you are pressing, which means you are applying a force. This force is acting on an area. Then again, you can say that there is a pressure created. Due to this pressure, you will be experiencing a pain. Okay. So, understood what the simple concept of pressure is? Thrust and pressure. First, we will understand what is thrust. We know what is force. Force is any push or pull. Force can change the shape of an object, size of an object. It can change the direction of motion. All this we have discussed. Now, what is thrust? Here you can see a boy is pushing a wall. Okay. He is applying force on the wall. Here this force is acting perpendicular to the surface. Okay. When a book is placed on a table, the book will be applying a force in a direction that is perpendicular to the surface of the table. Okay. When you sit on a floor, in which direction is the force being applied? You are applying force in the downward direction that is perpendicular to the floor. Okay. Here you can see a nail which is driven into a box. Okay. To drive the nail into the box using a hammer, what is then a force is applied. You can see this force is perpendicular to the surface of the box. Okay. So, a force that is perpendicular to the surface is called thrust. Thrust is the force acting normally on a surface. Okay. And this thrust will be equal to the weight of the body. Okay. Thrust exerted by a body on a surface is equal to the weight of the body. Okay. When a body is kept, for example, if you are taking a box okay this box can be placed in different manner okay first is when this part comes as a base okay this part is touching the surface next is when this part is touching the surface next is when this part is touching the surface do you think there will be a difference in weight no right in whichever face it is kept there will be no change in the weight of the body, which means there is no change in thrust. Okay, now we know force is a vector quantity. Therefore, we can say thrust is also a vector quantity. Okay, thrust is a force and since force is a vector quantity, thrust is also a vector quantity. Clear? Unit of thrust. It is measured in the unit of force. What is the unit of force? According to Newton's second law of motion which gives the equation for force. Force F is equal to mass into acceleration. Okay. What is the unit of mass? Mass is kilogram. An acceleration meter per second square. Okay. So, unit of force is kilogram meter per second square or the unit is Newton taken from the name of scientist Sir Isaac Newton, which is represented by capital N. Okay. Since the unit of force is Newton, thrust is a force. Therefore, the unit of the SI unit of thrust is Newton. Okay. Now, what is the CGS unit? CGS unit is where length is taken in centimeter, weight in grams and time in seconds. Okay, now what is the CGS units? We know that 1 Newton is equal to 1 kilogram meter per second square. We have to convert it into CGS unit, which is equal to 1 kilogram converting to grams is 1000 grams into 1 meter per second square. 1 meter is 100 centimeter per second square. In both the units, time will anyways be in seconds which is equal to 10 raised to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 
ग्राम सेंटीमीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर ओके दिस ग्राम सेंटीमीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर इज नॉन एस डाइन सो टेन रेज टू फाइव डाइन ओके वन न्यूटन इज इक्वल टू टेन रेज टू फाइव डाइन ओके सो देर फॉर वी कैन से सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ ट्रस्ट इज डाइन ओके द रिलेशन बिटवीन द एस आई यूनिट एंड द सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ ट्रस्ट इज वन न्यूटन इज इक्वल टू टेन रेज टू फाइव डाइन ओके नाउ देर इज अ ग्रेविटेशनल यूनिट द ग्रेविटेशनल यूनिट ऑफ ट्रस्ट इन द एम के एस सिस्टम एंड सी जी एस सिस्टम विल बी स्टडी इन द एम के एस सिस्टम इज किलोग्राम फोर्स ओके के जी एफ सो वी हैव वन किलोग्राम फोर्स इज इक्वल टू नाइन पॉइंट एट न्यूटन्स ओके नाउ वी वी हैव टू find the gravitational unit of thrust in cgs system what is the relation between them we got 1 kg force is equal to 9.8 newton okay 1 kg f is equal to 9.8 newton so we need what is 1 g force to get 1 g force this 1 kg f can be written as 1000 g force is equal to here we have 9.8 newtons okay this is 9.8 किलोग्राम मीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर विच इज इक्वल टू दिस वी हैव टू कन्वर्ट इट इंटू सेंटीमीटर एंड ग्राम्स राइट सो दिस इज नाइन पॉइंट एट इंटू किलोग्राम इंटू ग्राम्स टेन रेस टू थ्री मीटर्स इंटू सेंटीमीटर्स टेन रेस टू टू ग्राम सेंटीमीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर इज थाउजेंड ग्राम फोर्स देन वॉट इज वन ग्राम फोर्स One gram force is nine point eight into ten raised to three plus two five divided by thousand. That is ten raised to three gram centimeter per second square. Okay, so here ten raised to five and ten raised to three, which can be cancelled, you will get ten raised to two. Ten raised to two into nine point eight is nine eighty. And we know gram centimeter per second square is dy. So we are having one gram force is equal to nine eighty di. So this is a relation. Okay, these are the units of thrust. Next is pressure. Pressure is nothing but pressure is the thrust per unit area. We know that all these forces acting on a surface. Yes. So that force acting on a surface is called pressure. Pressure is the thrust per unit area of a surface, which means pressure is equal to thrust by area okay now here in this example you can see the nail is driven into a surface right so here the force is applied on a surface force per unit area or thrust per unit area gives us the pressure how much pressure is applied okay now take a case if you are standing on a stand and the second case is you are sleeping on a sand in both the cases we know that the thrust will be same yes but in the first case the chances of you sinking will be higher what is the reason in the first case the pressure will be higher why because you can see that when you stand on the sand thrust is same okay but what about area you are standing on a small area okay area is small when you are sleeping on the surface of sand what happens area increases area increases means pressure decreases therefore you don't sink from this we understand pressure is inversely proportional to area okay for given thrust when area increases pressure decreases and when area decreases pressure increases small area large pressure large area small pressure we'll take another example if you keep a nail fixed on a table okay and you place your finger over it you can see that you will be experiencing a pain okay now you are placing similar nails many similar nails and over this you are placing your finger you won't be experiencing any pain so what is happening here the thrust is same but what happens to the area here the area on which it is acting is very small here the area increases when area increases we know that the pressure decreases so got an idea about pressure now the unit of pressure we said thrust is a vector quantity but pressure is a scalar quantity okay what is pressure pressure is equal to thrust by area or force by area 
okay then what is the unit unit will be unit of force newton unit of area meter square newton per meter square or nm raised to minus 2 is a unit the si unit of pressure is newton per meter square okay now there is another unit taken from the name of a scientist blaise pascal this is blaise pascal and the unit is pascal which is represented by pa so 1 pascal will be equal to 1 pascal is equal to 1 newton per meter square which means 1 pascal is the pressure acting on a surface of area 1 meter square when the force exerted is 1 meter 1 newton okay so 1 pascal is equal to 1 newton divided by 1 meter square now there is gravitational unit as well when the force is in the unit is kilogram force and the area in meter square okay then this is the unit kilogram force per meter square this is the mks unit in the gravitational unit in mks system now the gravitational unit you also have in the cgs system in cgs system what will be the gram force per centimeter square okay cgs unit is dyne per centimeter square now how to get dyne per centimeter square we have one newton per meter square okay we know that one newton is equal to 10 raised to 5 dyne we are going to find the relation so one newton is equal to 10 raised to 5 dyne per meter square okay we have to convert it into centimeter we have one meter as 100 centimeter which means one meter square will be equal to 100 into 100 that is 10 raised to 4 centimeter square which is equal to 10 raised to 5 okay denominator you will have 10 raised to 4 centimeter square 10 raised to 5 by 10 raised to 4 dyne per centimeter square on cancelling you get 10 dyne per centimeter square is 1 newton per meter square which means 1 pascal is equal to 1 newton per meter square is equal to 10 dyne per centimeter square okay then what is 1 dyne per centimeter square it will be equal to 1 divided by 10 newton per meter square which is equal to 0 0.1 newton per meter square 1 dyne per centimeter square so these are the units of pressure we have other units of pressure other units of pressure are bar and millibar one bar is equal to 10 raised to 5 newton per meter square or 10 raised to 5 pascals okay then one millibar we know one bar will be equal to 10 raised to 3 millibar which means one millibar will be equal to 1 by 10 raised to 3 which is 10 raised to minus 3 bar this is equal to here we have 1 bar is 10 raised to 5 newton per meter square okay so 10 raised to minus 3 into 10 raised to 5 newton per meter square which is equal to 10 raised to 2 newton per meter square or 100 so 1 millibar is equal to 100 pascals okay there is another unit atmospheric pressure is generally expressed in terms of height of mercury column in the barometer so this is how a barometer setup is here we have mercury how much the mercury rises okay so one atmosphere you will be having that is at a constant temperature and pressure that is being considered okay in the sea level you will be getting 0 0.76 meters of mercury hg is a symbol of mercury or 76 centimeter of hg or 760 millimeters of hg okay these are the units so we can have one atmosphere this is also a unit of pressure one atmosphere one atm is equal to 0 0.76 meters of mercury this is also equal to 1.0 13 into 10 raised to 5 pascal okay 
there is another unit which is taken from the name of a scientist torsely which is one tor one tor will be equal to 1 mm of mercury now the relation between atmosphere and tor one atmosphere will be equal to 760 tor so these are the units of pressure clear let us take an example thrust applied by a brick on ground is 4 kg force dimensions of the brick are 20 cm 10 cm 5 cm when is the pressure applied we maximum minimum so here you have a brick dimensions 20 cm this is 10 cm this is 5 cm so you can keep this brick in three type that is 20 10 as base or 5 by 10 as base or 20 by 5 as base okay yes now in which case we are going to find in which case there is maximum pressure and minimum pressure we know that pressure is equal to thrust by area okay thrust is anyways going to be the same thrust will always be equal to 4 kg force okay now what about area so we'll consider the first area okay area is taken as 20 cm by 10 cm okay 20 cm by 10 cm is taken as the base now what happens you can find the area area will be equal to 20 into 10 200 cm square then the pressure p1 will be equal to 4 kg force divided by 200 cm square which is equal to 400 divided by 200 into 100 kg force per cm square so cancelling here you get 2 which is equal to 0.02 kg force per cm square so this is the pressure p1 when the base considered is dimension 20 cm by 10 cm now the second you when you take area equal to 10 cm into 5 cm which is equal to 50 cm square pressure p2 will be equal to 4 kg force divided by 50 cm square that is equal to 400 divided by 50 into 100 kg force per cm square okay so cancelling here you get 8 which is equal to 0.08 kg force per cm square okay so this is the pressure p2 now when you take the third case that is area equal to 20 cm by 5 cm you will be getting 100 cm square therefore pressure p3 is equal to 4 kg force divided by 100 cm square which is equal to 0.04 kg force per cm square okay now on comparing here p1 is 0.02 kg force per cm square p2 is equal to 0.08 kg force per cm square and p3 is equal to 0.04 kg force per cm square which is maximum in this case you are getting maximum pressure okay that is the second case when the dimensions are 10 cm 5 cm for base here you can see the areas minimum in the first case you got area 200 cm square here it is 50 cm square and here 100 cm square which means minimum area maximum pressure now second to find the minimum okay so this is maximum pressure and the minimum pressure is 0.02 kg force per cm square minimum where the area is maximum 200 cm square clear now what are the factors affecting the pressure we have pressure is equal to thrust by area pressure is equal to thrust by area 
we have considered an example from which we understood area increases pressure decreases and area decreases pressure increases minimum area maximum pressure maximum area minimum pressure okay so the pressure exerted on the surface depends on two factors first is the area on which the stress is applied pressure is inversely proportional to area pressure inversely proportional to area p increases when area decreases and p decreases when area increases okay now the second is the magnitude of thrust consider that any one dimension will consider here we have 20 centimeter 10 centimeter okay so let's take the base area is equal to 20 into 10 that is 200 centimeter square area is the same okay now what i'm going to do is a similar block of the same weight i'm going to place over it okay over this i'm going to place dimensions are all the same now what happens here the area is not going to change the base area will be the same what will change the thrust will change okay previous example we have taken thrust is equal to 4 kilogram force now the same weight that is 4 kilogram force brick when placed over it what happens the thrust is going to double it becomes 8 kilogram force okay 8 kilogram force then what is the pressure pressure will be equal to thrust by area 8 kilogram force divided by 200 centimeter square okay so which is equal to 800 divided by 200 into 100 kilogram force per centimeter square cancelling we get 4 which is equal to 0 0.04 kilogram force per centimeter square okay clear so this is the pressure now so what has happened when thrust increases pressure also increases thrust pressure is directly proportional to thrust pressure proportional to thrust so pressure is inversely proportional to area of cross section and pressure is directly proportional to thrust ways of increasing pressure for a given thrust, the pressure on a surface is increased by reducing the area on which it is acting. We know that pressure is inversely proportional to area. What happens when area decreases? Pressure is going to increase. Okay. So, one example is pointed ends of nails or pin. So, when you consider these types of pins or the nails, you can see the ends or edges are pointed. Why is it done? So, when you take a hammer and you are going to drive it on a wooden box. What happens there or any block? What happens there? You will have to apply only a less pressure because here they are acting on a small area. Okay. Therefore, what happens? The pressure will increase on a small area. Pressure is going to increase. So, it can go into the box easily. Okay. So, that's why these types of pins and nails have pointed ends. Okay, now the second one is sharp edges of cutting tools. Have you ever imagined why scissors and knives are having sharp edges? This is because, for example, to cut an apple, will you use a knife or a box, plastic box? You will be using a knife, right? So, in knife, there is sharp edges, which means here the area is decreasing, the pressure will increase. So, by applying a small force only, what happens the pressure is going to increase because of small area and the cutting will become easier clear so this is the reason pressure is inversely proportional to area next flat slippers so here you can see a pointed heel slippers and a flat slipper okay we know that pressure is inversely proportional to area here you can see the area is less area less means pressure is going to increase pressure is higher okay small area pressure increases here you can see a flat surface right so flat means the area is increasing when area increases pressure decreases okay which one is difficult for you to walk wearing a flat slippers or a pointed heel slippers easier is to wear a flat slipper okay why because in this case the area is large and pressure is small you will be experiencing pain okay and difficulty to walk with the pointed heel slippers okay now the ways of decreasing pressure for a given thrust 
the pressure on a surface is reduced by increasing the area on which it is acting. So, here we are going to decrease pressure by increasing area. So, one case is wide wooden sleepers are placed below the railway track. So, on railway tracks you might have seen such wooden sleepers. Why are they kept? We know that the iron rails. Okay, the iron rails will be exerting pressure on the ground. So, this pressure can be reduced by keeping wire, um, wide or broad sleepers, wooden sleepers. Next, foundation of buildings are made wider than the walls. Here you can see the foundation will be wider compared to the walls. What is the reason? Because when area increases, the pressure decreases and the building does not get damaged because here the base or the foundation is having a wider area okay therefore pressure will be less for the safety of the building we are play, we have we are keeping foundations to be having wider walls so we have studied what is pressure how pressure is applied in case of salts now let us take the case of fluids okay what are fluids fluids are something that can flow a substance which can flow, flow is called a fluid all liquids and gases are fluids for example oil juice milk honey all these substances can flow therefore they are known as fluids okay they are property to flow pressure in fluids so when you take a toothpaste in the morning what you are doing you are applying a pressure on the tube right on the tube you will be applying so if this is a tube you will be applying a pressure either it can be here or here or here or here okay when you apply a pressure what happens the fluid inside comes out okay so i will be pressing for example i have a cream here okay i'll be pressing what am i doing i'm applying pressure and the fluid will come up okay we know that a solid exerts pressure on a surface due to its weight so when a solid object is placed on a surface it is the weight that is acting on the surface it is in the downward direction only okay now similarly a fluid also exerts pressure only on the surface on which it is placed. If you are taking water in a container, it will be applying pressure in all direction that is in the downward direction and also in the walls of the container except the free surface. Okay, A fluid contained in a vessel exerts pressure at all points and in all direction. So, if I even if I am pressing here what happens? The pressure will be equally distributed in all along this container. Okay, now take these three examples. In the first example, you can see a water bottle. On the water bottle, there are four holes. Okay, we are drawing a circle. We are taking a horizontal plane and then making holes on it. Water is poured into the bottle. What happens? The water will be thrown out through these holes. Okay, and you can see that the distance at which these water falls will be the same. Okay, now the next example, here you can see water is taken in a container, there are four holes through which water can jump out. But in this case, we have seen, in this case we have seen when the horizontal plane is considered, the distance is the same. Okay, same amount of water is jumping and where it reaches, that is the equal distance it has been reaching. Okay, but in this example, you can see that... <coughs> When the distance from the free surface is increasing, the distance at which the water gets thrown is also increasing. Okay, so when it is here, the water falls here. This is the first point. This is the second point. It falls here. And this is the third point. It falls here. There is a difference. Which means you can see the pressure is getting distributed. That is pressure is acting. The water exerts pressure on the container, walls of the container. Okay. Now the third example. So here you have taken a tube and a balloon. Okay. Water is poured into the tube. What happens? The balloon, even the water is poured into the tube, the balloon bulges out. Okay. You can see it's not the water goes only to its base and its length increases. What is happening? It is bulging. Okay. Next, here again more water is added. What happens? The balloon bulges more, which means the water is exerting pressure on the walls of the balloon in all directions. Okay. So, understood what is pressure? Pressure influence is exerted in all directions. Okay. 
when you take the case of solids it is only in the downward direction but when you take the case of liquids that, and uh, gases that is fluids it is in all directions okay pressure exerted by a liquid column so what are the factors on which the pressure depends we have already discussed this experiment you are taking a tumbler or a container in which water is filled okay so here three holes are made when the water is being filled you will be able to see that the water will be thrown out of these holes okay and you can see one more thing the distance from the base of the container where the water falls is different for the different the water which comes out of different holes okay so why is it happening you can see that this hole the first hole is at this distance from the free surface okay second hole is at this distance third hole is at this distance which means the distance from the free surface is changing okay you can see the depth is increasing so one factor on which the pressure depends is pressure depends on the depth okay and the pressure is directly proportional to depth which is represented with letter h which is height also okay now you can see that here the pressure experience will be maximum at this hole why because it is at maximum depth that is when depth increases pressure also increases and due to this reason it is being thrown out to a longer distance okay so first factor is the height or depth okay now the second factor we know that different substances will be having different density okay what is density density is equal to mass by volume okay mass of the substance taken divided by volume you will be getting the density okay now what is the unit of density mass is expressed in kilogram and volume meter cube so kilogram per meter cube is the unit of density density is represented using the greek letter rho okay so what happens when mass increases mass increases density also increases when volume decreases density increases with mass density is directly proportional with volume density is inversely proportional okay now for example when you take water water has a density of 1000 kg per meter cube okay and it is different for different liquids if you take four liquids for example we have honey milk water and oil okay you will be able to see that when you compare the densities the density of honey is greater than the density of milk greater than density of water and greater than density of oil which means of these four the less denser is oil and the most denser is honey okay so now imagine you have four similar containers four holes are this type of holes are made in the containers okay first one is filled with honey second with milk third with water and fourth with oil all these are fluids these fluids will be exerting pressure on the walls of the container okay when this pressure is exerted through the holes the liquid will start flowing out okay now you will be able to see one thing that is the maximum pressure is exerted on the walls by honey okay when compared with others so from this you understand the pressure increases when density increases okay maximum density fluid is honey okay so honey will jump out and reach a maximum distance from the base of the container okay maybe sometimes it will be like this this is how it is for honey okay now when it comes to milk for milk it is greater than the density is greater than water but less than honey so in between it should be okay next for water and when it comes to oil it will be falling a smaller distance okay compared to the other liquids okay for different liquids it is different how the liquid flows out will be different what is the reason because the pressure exerted on the walls are different so density is a factor on which the pressure of a fluid is different density of liquid rho okay so two factors we got and the third one you can see all these liquids are falling to the ground 
विच मीन्स देर इज एक्सेलरेशन एक्सेलरेशन ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी इज एक्टिंग सो थ्री फैक्टर्स आर डेप्थ डेंसिटी एंड एक्सेलरेशन ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी ओके सो पी इज डिरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू हेच रो जी now when you take a particular liquid for example when you take water you know the value of density acceleration due to gravity is not going to change anyway so if you are able to measure the depth you can find the pressure for example in this container we have first point second point and third point so you can measure this using a meter scale you can just measure this distances and then you can calculate the pressure for water's density we know and acceleration due to gravity will be 9.8 meter per second square which is represented by g okay so this is how you can find pressure pressure is equal to depth into density into acceleration due to gravity okay laws of liquid pressure following are the five laws of liquid pressure first one inside the liquid pressure increases with increase in depth from its free surface for that consider this example we have explained it so here depth h1 this is depth h2 this is depth h3 okay h1 less than h2 less than h3 we have p is equal to h rho g for a liquid rho and g will be the same the water's density and acceleration due to gravity will be the same so it is only dependent upon the depth okay so p1 will be equal to h1 rho g p2 is equal to h2 rho g and p3 is equal to h3 rho g okay so for maximum depth pressure is maximum which means p1 less than p2 less than p3 so pressure at first point is less than pressure at the second point is less than pressure at the third point so third point will be having the maximum pressure okay even when the atmospheric pressure is considered you are adding the same value to all next in a stationary liquid pressure is same at all point in a horizontal plane that is this example so here when a horizontal plane is considered you have put holes okay so the force exerted or the pressure exerted by the liquid will be same in all directions okay because here the depth is same okay we know that pressure depends only on depth density and acceleration due to gravity acceleration due to gravity and density are the same what about the depth depth is also the same so the same is the depth from the free surface in all the cases next third point pressure is same in all direction about a point inside the liquid okay so when you consider any point this point will be expert exerting pressure in all directions okay this pressure will be the same so when you take a toothpaste so when you exert a pressure the same pressure when you exert it at any point you will be getting the same amount of fluid okay next pressure at same depth is different in different liquids it increases with increase in the density of liquid again the same case that is instead of water if you are taking milk blood honey or oil any other fluids what happens depending on the density if the density increases the pressure also increases okay depending on the density there will be a change in pressure next is a liquid seeks its own level that is it will be maintaining its own level for different liquids it is different clear some consequences of liquid pressure the pressure at a certain depth in sea water is more than at the same depth in river water what is the reason reason is that the density of sea water is more than the density of river water density of sea water greater than the density of river water which means when density we know density is directly proportional to the pressure same depth we are considering acceleration due to gravity will be the same so only factor on which it depends on is the density okay so pressure in sea water will be greater than the pressure in river water okay we'll take another example also for example if you are taking a container inside the container you are taking some water okay now when you put a lemon what happens you will see that the lemon will sink okay a container in which you are putting a lemon the lemon will sink now what you are going to do is you are going to add 
salt to it. So when salt, when you add salt, what is happening? The density of the fluid is increasing. So when the density of the fluid becomes equal to the density of lemon, the lemon will start floating on the surface of the fluid. Okay. So this is another example to show that seawater is having density greater than the river water. That is salt water is having density greater than the normal fresh water. Now the second one, the wall of dam are made thicker at the bottom. Why is this then? The thickness of its wall increases from top towards the bottom. So when you take a dam, you will be able to see the thickness will be, that is broader walls will be at the bottom. So here the reason is pressure. What happens to pressure? Pressure depends on depth, density and acceleration due to gravity. Density and acceleration due to gravity will be the same. What about the depth? Depth from the free surface is increasing. When depth increases, what happens to pressure? Pressure will start increasing. So towards the bottom, what happens? There is maximum pressure. To withstand this pressure, we are having broader walls. Okay. So the reason is that the pressure exerted by liquid increases with its depth. A thicker wall is required to withstand a greater pressure. That is, the dam doesn't get damaged. Therefore, the wall of a dam is made with thickness increasing towards the base. Okay, comparing the top and the base, the base will be having broader walls. Third, the water supply tank is placed high. To supply water in a town or colony, the tank to store water for supply is made at sufficient height. So when height increases, what happens? The pressure increases. Okay, so the reason is that as greater is the height of tank, more will be the pressure of water in the taps of a house. Therefore, the supply will be easier. You may be seen water tanks are at elevated water tanks. They are kept on the terrace. Okay, so here what happens? The pressure will be increasing. Due to this reason, when the height increases, pressure increases and the supply will be smooth. Okay, next is diverse suit. So diverse suit, you know, it will be made up of glass or Aluminium. So what is the reason? The sea divers need special protective suit to wear because in deep sea, the total pressure exerted on the diver's body is much more than the blood pressure. Okay. To withstand this, what should be done? The pressure he exerts should be higher. Okay. The suit's pressure will be maintained at one atmosphere. So by using glass or aluminium suits, what happens? The pressure, he will be able to withstand his blood pressure. Okay. So this is the reason. Understood that is there is a density increase. Density is increasing and hence pressure is increasing. Okay. So when the, he goes to deep seas, what happens? The pressure is increasing. He have to withstand it. Size of gas bubble inside water increases. So when you take gas bubbles inside water, you will be able to see the size of bubble to be increasing and it will be maximum to maximum height. At the maximum height, there will be maximum size of bubble. So here what is happening, when you consider these bubbles, the depth is decreasing. When depth decreases, pressure decreases. Okay, according to Boyle's law, we have pressure inversely proportional to volume, which means here you can see to the height, when it comes close to the free surface, you can see pressure is minimum, which means volume will be maximum. Okay, therefore, the volume of bubbles will be maximum to the surface, okay, to the free surface. That is a bubble which is very close to the free surface will be having the maximum size. We'll take an example. A boy weighing 60 kilogram force is wearing shoes with heel of area of cross section 20 centimeter square, while a girl weighing 45 kilogram force is wearing sandals with heel of area of cross section 1.5 centimeter square. Compare the pressure exerted on ground by their heels when they stand on the heel of one foot. First, we'll take the case of boy. Here, what is the thrust? Thrust will be equal to the weight of boy that is 60 kilogram force. And now, what is the area? Area is equal to 20 centimeter square. Okay. Therefore, pressure P1 will be equal to thrust by area 60 kilogram force divided by 20 centimeter square which is equal to 3 kilogram force centimeter raised to minus 2. Now, we will take the case of girl. Here, what is the thrust? Thrust will be the weight of the girl which is equal to 45 kilogram force and then area 
area will be equal to 1.5 centimeter square. Pressure P2 is equal to 45 kilogram force divided by 1.5 centimeter square. That is 450 divided by 15 kilogram force centimeter raised to minus 2 which is equal to 30 kilogram four centimeter raised to minus 2. Now we have to compare them for so that the pressure exerted by girl divided by pressure exerted by boy is equal to 30 kilogram four centimeter raised to minus 2 divided by 3 kilogram four centimeter raised to minus 2. Units can be removed 30 by 3 which is 10. So P2 by P1 is equal to 10 or P2 is equal to 10 times P1 which means the pressure exerted by girl is 10 times the pressure exerted by boy. Okay. Pressure exerted by girl is 10 times the pressure exerted by boy. Okay, third example, calculate the pressure due to a water column of height 100 meter, take G is equal to 10 meter per second square and density of water 10 cube kilogram per meter square, meter cube. Okay, we know that pressure is equal to depth into density into acceleration due to gravity. Here we are given that the depth or height is equal to 100 meters. Acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square and density rho is equal to 10 cube kilogram per meter cube. We can find the pressure. Pressure will be equal to 100 into 10 into 10 cube. That is equal to, this is 10 raised to 2 into 10 raised to 1 into 10 raised to 3 which is 10 raised to 2 plus 1 plus 3 equal to 10 raised to 6. 10 raised to 6 and what is the unit? Unit of pressure which is Pascal. 10 raised to 6 Pascal or 10 raised to 6 Newton per meter square. Okay, fourth example, a square plate of side 10 meter is placed horizontally 1 meter below the surface of water. The atmospheric pressure is 1.031 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square. Calculate the total thrust on the plate. So, here there is atmospheric pressure and the pressure due to water column. Okay, so first we will be finding the total pressure. Total pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure plus pressure due to the water column. Okay. So, to find total pressure, what is the atmospheric pressure? It is given 1.031 into 10 raised to 5. Okay. Plus Pressure due to the water column which will be H rho G. P is equal to 1.031 into 10 raised to 5 plus height here it is 1 meter. Density of water will be equal to 10 cube kilogram per meter cube and then acceleration due to gravity which is 9.8 meter per second square. When you add, you will be getting 1.111 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square. So, this is the pressure, total pressure. Now, we have pressure is equal to thrust by area. If pressure is thrust by area, we need to find thrust. Thrust will be equal to total pressure into area that is equal to 1.111 into 10 raised to 5 into here what is the area we are given a square plate of side 10 meter which means area will be side is 10 meter all the sides are 10 meter area is side into side 10 meter into 10 meter equal to 100 meter square so into 100 
meter square. That is equal to 1.111 into 10 raised to 7 Newton. Okay, thrust, the unit of thrust is Newton. So, this is the final answer. Now, we will solve numericals from exercise 4a. Question 1 of exercise 4a. A hammer exerts a force of 1.5 Newton on each of the two nails A and B. The area of cross section of tip of nail A is 2 millimeter square while that of B is 6 millimeter square. Calculate pressure on each nail in pascals. We need in pascal. So, what is 1 pascal? 1 pascal is 1 Newton per meter square. So, we need all the units force units in newtons and the area should be in meter square. So, we have to convert these, right? Okay. So, here first when you take the case of nail A. Let us find the pressure. Okay. Here what is the thrust? Thrust is equal to 1.5 newton. Area is equal to 2 millimeter square. We know that 1 meter is equal to 1000 millimeter. Okay. Then what is 1 millimeter? 1 millimeter will be 10 raised to minus 3 meter. Therefore, 1 millimeter square will be 10 raised to minus 3 square meter square, which is equal to 10 raised to minus 6 meter square. Okay. So, 1 millimeter square is equal to 10 raised to minus 6 meter square. So, here we are having 2 millimeter square. This will be 2 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter square. Now we can find the pressure. Pressure in A. PA is equal to thrust by area 1.5 Newton divided by 2 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter square which is equal to 1.5 into 10 raised to 6 Newton per meter square divided by 2. Okay. Or this can be written as 15 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square divided by 2 equal to 7.5 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square. So, this is the pressure in exerted by nail A. Now, the pressure exerted by B nail D. Okay. Here again thrust is equal to 1.5 Newton. Area is equal to 6 millimeter square which is 6 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter square. Now we can find the pressure in B which is equal to 1.5 Newton divided by 6 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter square which is 1.5 into 10 raised to 6 divided by 6 Newton per meter square. Okay. So, this is equal to 15 by 6 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square that is equal to we can cancel 3 into 2 is 6, 3 into 5 is 15. So, 2.5 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square. Okay. So, Newton per meter square is Pascal. Pressure exerted by nail A is equal to 7.5 into 10 raised to 5 Pascal and pressure exerted by nail B is equal to 2.5 into 10 raised to 5 Pascal. Okay, question number 4 of exercise 4a. The area of base of a cylindrical vessel is 300 centimeter square. Water of density 1000 kilogram per meter cube is poured into it up to a depth of 6 centimeter. Calculate the pressure. The thrust of water on the base given acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square. So, first we need to find the pressure here. What is given? We are given the density of water to be 1000 kilogram per meter cube. Acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square. Then we are having the depth which is 6 centimeters. Okay. So, the 6 centimeters is equal to 6 into 10 raised to minus 2 meters. 
Now we can easily find what pressure is. Pressure is equal to H rho G equal to 6 into 10 raise to minus 2 into 10 into 1000. That is equal to 6 into 10 raise to minus 2 into 10 raise to 1, 2, 3, 4. Equal to 6 into 10 square. That is 600 and the unit is Pascal. 600 Pascal or 600 Newton per meter square. Next, we have to find the thrust of water on the base. We are also given the area, area equal to 300 centimeter square. Okay, so 300 centimeter square. We have 1 meter, 100 centimeter, which means 1 centimeter equal to 10 raise to minus 2 meter. Then 1 centimeter square will be equal to 10 raise to minus 2 meter into 10 raise to minus 2 meter equal to 10 raise to minus 4 meter square. Okay. So, here we have 300 centimeter square that is 300 into 10 raise to minus 4 meter square. This is the area. Now, we can find the thrust. If pressure is equal to thrust by area, then thrust will be equal to pressure into area which is equal to here the pressure is 600 pascals into 300 into 10 raise to minus 4 meter square which is equal to 6 into 3 18 into 10 raise to 1 2 3 4 4 zeros then you have 10 raise to minus 4 pascal meter square we know the unit of thrust is Newton. These both gets cancelled then you have 18 Newton. So, the thrust is 18 Newton and the pressure is 600 Pascals. Question 6 of exercise 4a. The pressure of water on the ground floor is 40,000 Pascal and on the first floor is 10,000 Pascal. Find the height of the first floor. We are given density is equal to 1000 kilogram per meter cube and acceleration due to gravity 10 meter per second square. So, here we have the roof so, this is first floor and this is ground floor. Okay. So, the height, the pressure of water on the ground floor. So, this depth will take it as H1. And this depth to the floor, first floor from the roof, from the free surface, will take it as H2. Okay. So, this part will give you the height of first floor, which will be equal to H1 minus H2. So, separately, we have to find H1 and H2. First, consider the case of ground floor. The ground floor, what is the water's pressure? Pressure we know is H rho G. So, ground floor when considered, pressure is equal to H1 rho G. Okay, now put the values. Pressure is 40,000 equal to H1 into 1000 into 10. H1 is equal to 40,000 divided by 1000 into 10 cancelling zeros you get 4 meter. So, H1 is equal to 4 meter. Okay. Next to find H2 that is first floor. First floor what is the pressure? Pressure is given as 10,000. So, 10,000 is equal to H2 into 1000 into 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Cancelling, we get H2 is equal to 1 meter. H2 is 1 meter. Now, we can find the height of first floor. Height of first floor will be equal to H1 minus H2. That is 4 meter minus 1 meter is equal to 3 meters. So, 3 meters is the height of first floor. Clear? That's all for today. In today's class, we have discussed about thrust and pressure. Unit of thrust, unit of pressure. We have studied about fluids. We have discussed fluid pressure. What are the consequences of fluid pressure? And also, we have solved questions from exercise 4a. Hope you all enjoyed the session. I'll be back in the next session. Until then, stay tuned to Learn Hub. Learn Hub free hai, par best hai. Thank you.